Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 3rd of November. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week. I created a video all about the new Arc enabled System Center Virtual Machine Manager. I've done a lot of these Arc enabled videos lately. This really rounded off that complete solution and now I can bring that Azure control plane, a lot of the features of Azure to my SCVMM managed environment. And then also get information about that environment and control and provisioning uh, through the Azure fabric. I also did update my virtual mentoring playlist um, if you're looking for those more soft skills uh, type guidance. So onto what's new, on the compute side, so the Azure Static Web Apps now have snippets. So Azure Static Web Apps are fantastic if I want that globally available service for my pre-rendered content. So my HTML, my CSS, images, videos, whatever that might be, it integrates very tightly with DevOps scenarios for its content. Well, snippets enable me to have a piece of code that will get injected into every page that it serves up. It could be injected into the header, into the body. So maybe I've got some little bit of code to maybe count visitors, that have some global function I want. Well, now I can do that with snippets. Also, Azure Static Web Apps, they've added traffic splitting capabilities. So one of the things I can do with Azure Static Web Apps, I talked about that integration with DevOps. Well, maybe I have an alternate branch for maybe some functionality I'm working on the next version, for example, or some feature. Well, one of the things I could do is I can have another environment as part of my Azure Static Web App in addition to the production one that has the code from a particular branch or maybe multiple branches. What this lets me do, providing I'm using the standard hosting plan, is I can say, look, 60% of the traffic go to the production environment, 20% go to this branch environment, 20% to this other branch environment. And I can modify those so it's great for maybe A, B type scenarios, maybe rolling out in certain control environments. But hey, I can now do that traffic splitting. And then App Service now has the gRPC support in GA. So the whole gRPC, those remote procedure calls, has the benefit that it's based on top of that HTTP2 for my client server communications. You typically see it in a lot of mobile applications, my web applications. It gives me a lot of benefits. For example, I can have multiplexing. I can send multiple parallel requests over the same connection. I can even do simultaneous both request and receive. So I can do those simultaneously. So this is supported on the Linux environment. And then this is very interesting. This Azure canon canonical snapshot integration in preview. If I think about my Ubuntu based workloads, this could be VMs, it could be things like AKS. Uh, one of the things we like to do is maybe for example, I've got my region one and I'm using one of the pilot regions. I've got my dev test running here. And then as you know, Microsoft follow those safe deployment practices. So then region two gets updates, region three gets updates, et cetera, et cetera. And so I can think about, well, okay, if I think about the Ubuntu update, maybe this time is the first of Feb. So I do the testing, I've automated testing running, I'm using Azure load testing, I'm running Chaos Studio. So I'm testing thoroughly this set of patches. Well then my production, maybe set one is here. Well, the problem is, if it gets new patches every day, this would then get those patches, but also the ones that were new between those dates. And this one would get the ones that are new between that date. So my whole goal of making sure I'm testing exactly what I will see in production, which is over here, is a little bit broken. Because if it's the latest nightly updates, this is gonna get an additional night of updates. So what this snapshot support does is yes, this will get the first of Feb, but then this will also get the first of Feb. This will also get the first of Feb. 
which means I'm getting that consistency that what I'm testing thoroughly with my app is exactly what those next regions will get as well. So this is a really, really nice capability. It helps me ensure, okay, I'm not gonna get some patch that maybe breaks something that I didn't test. Moving on to networking. So Azure Bastion Developer SKU is now in preview. And really the goal of this developer SKU is, well, as the name suggests, is more dev test scenarios. I don't need all the advanced features. For example, um, I can't do cross OS communication methods, i.e. I can't RDP to Linux, I can't SSH to Windows. I cannot connect to peered virtual networks. So this chart goes through them all, but basically it's giving you the core connectivity without any of the richer capabilities, without any of the, hey, more powerful automatic scaling and, and things like that. So it's really just focused on that managed jump box, jump box experience to help get me connected to the things in that particular virtual network. And then also for the regional web application firewall, so regional means it connects to App Gateway. They've now got that default rule set 2.1. And the, the big deal here is it's based on that um, OWASP core rule set 3.3.2, but as always, they add in an additional four, I believe it is based on the Microsoft threat intelligence um, knowledge. So if we go and look at that, if we look at the core rule sets for a second, um, one of the things you'll see is right down here, you get these additional threat intel. And the big deal is, is, I guess I said there's four extras. This one replaces what is the normal known CVEs. So it, it's 17 instead of 14, but the threat Intel CVEs replaces what you normally get um, for the CVEs. So that's why it's 17 or 14, but you get four of them based on that Microsoft threat intelligence. On the storage side, so now the blob batch operation support cold tier. So the batch operations, there's really two of them, and it's the ability to put in multiple requests within a single operation. Maybe that's the wrong way around. I can put in multiple operations within one body of the request. And that's really useful is, hey, I wanna delete a whole bunch of files. Hey, I wanna change the tier of a whole bunch of files, blob specifically. So now as part of that blob batch operation, when I wanna change tier, I can specify that newer cold tier. So we have the hot, the cool, the cold, the archive. So I can use that now with those blob batch operations. And also the TLS 1.2 will become the minimum version supported. I think it's 1st of November, 2024. It's already the default, but what this is saying is TLS 1.0 and 1.1, they're gonna go away. And then premium SSD V2 is now available in some new regions, Poland Central, China North 3, and the US Gov Virginia region. Remember the whole point of the V2 is it changes the model so that the IOPS and the throughput are now separate dials I can turn from the capacity, and I can also dynamically change those. So it's a lot more like the ultra SSD. It's sub millisecond latency, Ultra SSD is still a lower latency even than the premium SSD V2. So that's what kind of sets those things apart. And Ultra has a higher IOPS and throughput capability. And then miscellaneous, there's a new email template for those alerts that I can trigger through action groups that's based on a log search. So the idea here is if I'm using the non-common schema, it's just a more informative email template. I still have the old one if I'm using the common schema, but it's more visually appealing, uh, gives me more information. And that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Until the next update and next video, take care.